Hi friends, today we're going to read a story called What Do You Do With a Problem? Um, which is a book about a little boy who uh, has a problem, um, tries to get rid of it, and it just grows and grows and grows. Um, and when he decides to tackle it, um, he learns a little bit about what problems are. Um, it's going to be a little different in that it doesn't follow a typical story structure where it's going to be really specific about what that problem is, so you're going to have to use your imagination and the picture. What do you do with a problem? Written by Kobe Yamada, illustrated by Mae Beeson. I don't know how it happened, but one day I had a problem. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I really didn't like having a problem, but it was there. Why is it here? What does it want? What do you do with a problem, I thought. I wanted to make it go away. I shoot it, I scowled at it, I tried ignoring it, but nothing worked. I started to worry about my problem. What if it swallows me up? What if my problem sneaks up and gets me? What if it takes away all of my things? I worried a lot. I worried about what would happen. I worried about what could happen. I worried about this and worried about that. And the more I worried, the bigger my problem became. I wished it would just disappear. I tried everything I could to hide from it. I even found ways to disguise myself. But it still found me. And the more I avoided my problem, the more I saw it. Everywhere. I thought about it all the time. I didn't feel good at all. I couldn't take it anymore. This has to stop, I declared. Maybe I was making my problem bigger and scarier than it actually was. After all, my problem hadn't really swallowed me up or attacked me. I realized that I had to face it. So, even though I didn't want to, even though I was really afraid, I got ready, and I tackled my problem. When I got face to face with it, I discovered something. My problem wasn't what I thought it was. I discovered it had something beautiful inside. My problem held an opportunity. It was an opportunity for me to learn and to grow, to be brave, to do something. It showed me that it was important to look closely, because some opportunities only come once. So now I see problems differently. I'm not afraid of them anymore, because I know they're secret. Every problem has an opportunity for something good. You just have to look for it. So I hope you enjoyed that story as much as I did. Um, I think right now it is a good story for, for kids and for grown-ups. Uh, you might talk uh, about a problem that you have had or that you're having right now, something that seems really scary um, and difficult to solve. Um, and then think about some of the ways you might solve it. How might you face that problem head on? So you also might be thinking about habit number one, be proactive. Uh, I think this is a really good example of um, finding that space between when something happens, you have this problem, and before you respond, um, making some choices and thinking about what's inside your circle of control and how you might um, solve or influence the problem that you're facing. So I was just about to post this video and I um, was re-watching it and I noticed that in my book introduction I said there's a little boy in the story and I'm realizing that that might have been my own um, lens as I was reading it um, and connecting to the story. Um, it's not clear whether the main character is a, a little boy or a little girl. Um, right now they're just a, a little child. Um, so I just thought I'd add that piece of uh, awareness in that sometimes we interpret the text in the way we want to hear it. Now, I have a feeling that the illustrator was probably really intentional about that. That was a decision that the person who illustrated the book made um, to make it ambiguous or unclear so that both boys and girls uh, could find themselves in the story and could connect to the book.